All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about some bugs I found in Cubase 9.5. So the first bug that I want to mention is with the mix console history. And I've noticed in some projects as I was working the past few few weeks or so is sometimes the history would not work almost at all like some of the features would recognize other features would not and sometimes it was fine it seems to be like an intermittent issue but the big thing is oh let's say here I opened up this project and this RC 48 which is a native instruments uh, reverb plugin for some reason it shows this line here. I don't know what that means. I didn't do anything with the plugin. It just showed up on the history and I can go before that action. Doesn't make sense to me. Uh, then I inserted the Magneto 2 plugin on a separate channel and I moved it to this channel and it recognized that I inserted the plugin. If I take it off, it doesn't recognize that. If I go before, and go after it doesn't bring back the plugin it's not registering that uh, let's go into a so this is a no, I didn't want that I wanted the compressor so this is a um, a Cubase stock plugin now when I you see how it it registered the magneto being inserted but not the compressor plugin and then when I make changes to the plugin normally it would register all the different changes and I could even go into a a native instrument plugin change those parameters and then it would take each individual parameter and then it would log it in the history and then everything was working just fine now in this case like I said it's not working uh, some people have said in the forums that the way to fix this is to restart Cubase so to shut down the project shut down Cubase restart it and then open the project and hopefully it worked uh, this seems to be like completely intermittent on what it's going to actually do to work uh, I'm pretty sure in the channel stripped and the equalizer same thing nothing is registering uh, if I go into this is a separate mixer window so this is mix console the first one this is mix console 2 none of them are registering so this is a problem uh, for all of the mix console windows the next bug I've already demonstrated in another video and it's whenever I use my controller to move between the tracks the highlighted track is glitchy and then it leaves a trail of weird uh, highlights and whatnot in that and I'm pretty sure I looked in the forum and some of the Steinberg members have said that it's a known issue so that's likely going to be fixed in the next patch the 9.5.1 hopefully that's coming out soon keeping in theme to the visual glitches here you can see the font has now turned white and that's because I just changed a parameter and I set a new thing here and it this entire row is now set to a white font and it's I could barely make out what it is I can go and hit apply uh, switch screens and then I can go back and see it that's fine but uh, Steinberg should really take a look at many different menu systems to make sure that there's no more uh, visual glitches another known issue is whenever you start Cubase from scratch I think for me it was the very first time I chose a preference uh, color like a a user interface control scheme the very first time that I chose a custom color saved it stored it as a preset uh, used Cubase closed it down and then the second time I opened it up the color was back to its default color it wasn't saving and remembering that I had a preset stored and I'm pretty sure when I would go back and go
go into my preset and load that preset, it would load it as if it was stored as the default color. So it wouldn't actually change it back to the color that I chose. It would just load the default again. So that was weird. It was very glitchy for the first time that I that I used it. And then I think it happened maybe a couple more times. And for some reason, it, st it stopped doing that. So now whenever I open up Cubase, it seems to recognize and know which color I've chosen and it's kept the color scheme in my preset. So don't know what that's about. This next one bugs me quite a bit. And I think this has been going on since about Cubase 9 or Cubase 8.5 or so. But it's to do with the folder tracks and walking the tracks. I'll try and describe and show you what happens. So in this folder, I have all these different tracks. They all have the lock on. If I engage the lock, everything is locked in here. Same thing with this here. There's these many tracks. If I lock them all, there we go, they're all locked. If I close this folder, the transitions and sound effects, and leave this one open, and then we go ahead and save the project, close it, and then open it back up again. Okay, now it's not doing it. <laughs> So before what would happen is I think, especially if it was a closed folder track, the, the lock button wouldn't be engaged on here. All of these individual tracks would still be locked, but this would not be in the lock position. And only when you open it and close it again, would this show that it's locked. And for some reason it's not doing it now. Maybe it was actually fixed in Cubase 9.5, but let me know if you had this same issue. <laughs> so in Cubase 9.5, Steinberg gave us some new plugins, or at least they remodeled, remade the plugins. And unfortunately, with the uh, Magneto 2 plugin, the high filter adjust, I'll show you what doesn't work. So I'll just get the drum loop here and play a section for you. This high filter adjust, when you engage it and adjust it, it doesn't do anything. And the only way to get around this is if you right click on the plugin and switch to the generic editor you could see how the high filter was actually engaged on the plugin. I engage it there. And it's actually off. So the way to get around this is to just go to the generic editor, turn it on from here. And now it works. You can go back to this part. And now it works again. So it's almost like you have to hard reset it in the generic editor mode. Then it goes back to normal. Let's do a, a quick test here. So it's working right now. Let's say, let's see if I close this plugin, then reopen it, see what it does. So you see how it's, it's now powered off. powered on, I turn on or I exit the plugin, bring it back up and it's and it's no longer active. So that's a, a total bug for sure. This next issue I think is going to be very difficult to demonstrate, but I'll try and explain it as best as I can. So what happens is with the uh, project window and with the mix console window, what would happen is that I would have a track selected in the project window and it would reflect that in the mix console as it should. Um, but oftentimes, or actually not oftentimes, intermittent times, sometimes when I would go and select another track, 
in the mix console it would have the two tracks selected so it would, it would have the old track that was already selected plus the second track that I selected in the project window so there'd be two selected here but only one selected in the project and then what I assume when I'm using my controllers is that it's going to activate the buttons on the track that's highlighted in the project area so I would be doing something like solo, mute, record, or monitor and it, it wouldn't actually reflect that on this track it would reflect it on the the initially selected track uh, that's also already highlighted in the mix console I hope that's <laughs> not too much of a mouthful but I've, I have seen a post in the forums as well of someone mentioning this exact issue and I think it's been confirmed by other users if not also by Steinberg but again like I said it's a very it's an intermittent issue so it's unfortunately I can't demonstrate that to you right now but it's a very annoying issue because like I said in the controller world I no longer know what it's controlling and I think the only way to fix the issue was to go and highlight one or both of the tracks or a new track in the mix console then it would smarten up and then it would go back to normal so hopefully uh, Steinberg looks into that and everything else that I've mentioned and hopefully in the next patch which is 9.5.1 and hopefully that's coming out soon uh, hopefully everything gets looked at and fixed and brought back to normal all right so that's the bugs that I've found thus far I think there's people have been saying a lot of different bugs like from crashes either on startup it, or Cubase won't start up um, a bunch of random crashes and let's say the plugin manager uh, I think they've also mentioned issues with like in the menu systems this kind of looks weird <laughs> oh yes so there's actually a folder icon missing here I just took a quick look at the forum post about this some of the menu systems seem to be a little bit out of whack uh, overall though like the update is good don't get me wrong <laughs> but it's I think many Cubase users know of the dreaded bugs that come along with the new updates and usually it takes like two patches to get most of the bugs fixed if not it takes the third patch to come along and fix all the the annoying issues but uh, I still have faith in Steinberg <laughs> maybe leave a comment down below and tell me what bugs you're having I might even do a part two of this video because I might find some new bugs I've done a very quick overview of what's showing up in the in the forums and I've tried to recreate some of the things that people were talking about and I've tried to select some of the more well-known big obvious bugs that uh, Cubase can fix or that Steinberg should be fixing so yeah thanks for watching everybody and take care see you in the next video bye bye